consecutive defense of your heavyweight title. You didn't have to take this fight. Why risk it? Why risk your undefeated legacy, that payday that potentially looms ahead with Tyson Fury? It's rumored to be in February. Why risk that in a rematch against a man that you already beat? Well, I feel like I'm the best in the world. I know I'm the best in the world. I say it, you know, I say it boldly. I say it with confidence. I say it with pride. And with that being said, I, I must get a fan what they're, what they're hungry for. And that's exciting fights. The heavyweight division was in, a, was in a dark place at one point in time, and now there's light shining on it. It's on fire, actually. And, you know, and with that being said, I must keep it going as a champion. I got I to gotta keep it going. And then with, with Luis Ortiz, nope. He's one of the best in the world, one of the most dangerous men in boxing, period. That's why no one in the top ten has ever given him an opportunity. They call him old and different things like that, but... The logic of it don't make sense because if he's old, then that's easy. You're supposed to get in there. You, you, no fear at all. You know, that's an easy fight to take if he's so old. That's what I see. But in reality, they know what, the, what, what they're facing, you know. And the first time it was, it was high risk, low rewards. This time it's a little bit different, but I'm blessing with the opportunity again. The first time I grew a bond with him because of his situation with, with his daughter and my daughter. So I understood. If no one understood, I understood the most because of my daughter born with uh, spina bifida. So me looking up, on, looking up on the landscape of the heavyweight division and seeing that still this man had no opportunity. He had to fight lower opposition, you know what I mean? Because no one would give it. So I look at this and I say, yo, I want to do it again. It was an amazing fight the first time. Even though he gave you trouble in that it, fight. Do you yeah. make adjustments in this fight? That's what it's all about. It's what it's all about. I, 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 you know, I'd rather go through stuff or go through situations in the ring than go through, a, a, than go through my whole career being perfect. You know, what, 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 what can I say or what kind of legacy would I have if I went my whole career just washing everyone out? You know? It's admirable. So you got to have something to be able to remember, you, remember me by, remember myself, or well, you know, that's what it's all about. And I wanted to bless him again because I, I was looking, I see these guys don't want to fight him, period. And I'm blessing him again with the opportunity to be on pay-per-view. This may be his last time here, you know, who knows, you know. He's getting up the well, let's so, ask him. You know, and I wanted to get him an opportunity to be on chance, to be on pay-per-view and gain money for his family. And, and, and like I told him, you know, when I seen him at Fox, I want him to get the best, the best of the best doctors for his daughter. And this is why we're here. Very respectable. And I know there's a mutual respect between the two of you. Luis, I have to ask you because you were looking fit and fierce coming into this fight. Herman Casero, your trader, has told me that you had six weeks before that last fight with Deontay. This time you had a full 12 weeks. You brought in Coach Wade, who is part mad scientist, part strength and conditioning coach. How will this Luis Ortiz be different against Deontay Wilder this time around. Ante todo quiero agradecerle a Dios a Deontay por por esta oportunidad a Jaime a a mi team por creer en mí. Eh, yo me siento me siento eh, agradecido de, de, de la vida. Eh, tengo mi hija que eh, entre entre lo que cabe está bien. Eso gracias a Dios por por todo. Eh, Lo que queda por decir nada es que, que voy a salir, no me voy, no, no es mi última oportunidad como, como dice Deonta y que, que, que esta puede ser mi última. Yo, yo me retiro cuando Dios quiera y cuando, cuando yo cuando yo diga. First of all I want to thank God, I want to thank the press, I want to thank Al Heyman, I want to thank my team. Uh, for me being here in this fight, I want to also thank Deontay Wilder. Um, and this is what life is all about. I mean, I have my daughter. I've been blessed. But this is not how Deontay is, is saying. This is not going to be my last opportunity. I'm here to fight, and that's what you'll see Saturday night. Well, I know you've lost uh, about 20 pounds. Your, your team telling me that you're throwing punches faster, that you plan to close the distance with Deontay. How do you do that? 
eso está cuando suena el campanazo eh, eh, el sábado en la noche, porque uno se entrena para un objetivo y cuando llega a ring todo se dificulta. Eh, hay que mantenerse enfocado y hacer su trabajo. No, we'll see that when the bell rings, because we have a plan, but things change. Sure. So the deal is that we can adapt to whatever is being thrown out at us, and that's what people see on Saturday night. All right, speaking of change, a debut in a new division for Leo Santa Cruz, your debut at Super Featherweight, 130 pounds. In your last fight, I was sitting in the corner talking to your brother Antonio about your volume of punches, over 1,200 thrown in that last fight. Do you expect to have that same kind of volume at 130? I think so, you know, I, we, I always train the same uh, in the bags, I'm throwing a lot of punches and every minute of you know, the round, I'm throwing a lot of punches. My dad says that the three, the three minute round, you have to be in, you know, working, working, throwing punches and that's what I do. The only thing we've been doing a little bit different is working more on our power because we know it's going to be a bigger division and the guys are going to be heavier and everything. So we've been setting our punches a little bit more and everything, but the punches is still the same. We throw in a lot of punches, and that's what we expect to do on Saturday night. How does one work on power? Uh, with my strength conditioning coach, he's been doing, making me do a little bit more weights, and also and with my sparring partners, I spar with bigger guys that fight at 140, 135. And what have they said? They said that I feel stronger, that, that I feel stronger, because I have sparred with them like um, a couple of times. And they say that for this camp, they feel me even more stronger than, than before. All right, well, yeah. the man who will find out is Miguel Flores. Yeah. <laughs> I know how much this opportunity means to you, not just because it's going to be an opportunity to win the title for yourself, but an opportunity to win a championship for your late brother, Ben, who gave the ultimate sacrifice to this sport. How do you intend to do that against such a volume puncher like Leo Santa Cruz? First of all, you know, I want to thank everybody for being here. And like you said, I mean, Leo's a great champion. Uh, actually, a little jealous of him because he got his whole family, his brothers and stuff. But I know my brothers are going to be there with me on uh, Saturday night as well. And uh, we've worked hard. I mean, it's all about uh, in boxing, uh, people see the hands fly, but it's all about ring knowledge. And I got that. And we're going to offset them. Uh, we're going to come away with the victory uh, Saturday night. We're looking forward to that one. It will be the co-feature of the night. As I mentioned, fireworks, Deontay. In that last fight, he had you buzzed. You have acknowledged that seventh round was difficult for you. You persevered, you came back and got the victory. Due to the, the physique of the man sitting to the left of me, he's a different Luis Ortiz. He may be 40, but he is probably in the best shape he's ever been. Does that matter? I mean, he looked good, though. <laughs> he looked good. <laughs> and, um, but I don't, think it's, I don't think it's gonna matter when you're dealing with a, a fighter like me, you know. 365. I'm always in shape. You know, what I mean, I come, I come to camp in shape. When, the first day of camp, we spar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, I'm always prepared. I'm always ready to go, and it's always a good feeling to uh, to see my opponents in shape as well. You know, and uh, and as as prepared properly and ready for a war. That's all I can ask for for my opponent is to be prepared and ready because they already know what fight they're they're in for when they're facing a Deontay Wilder. Most definitely. Luis, not many people can say they've experienced the power of Deontay Wilder. How would you rate his power, and is it the, the most you have faced in your career? Bueno, yo llevo eh, alrededor de casi 500 peleas que estoy peleando desde los, de los 10 años. Eh, el boxeo amateur es muy diferente al boxeo profesional. Eh, no es por gusto de onda es, es, el, es el campeón de eh, ha sido el campeón del mundo por, por varios años eh, y ahí arriba eh, los golpes de, de los pesos completos son patadas de, de, de caballo como decimos nosotros y sí sí me golpeó y me lastimó eh, eh, supe recuperarme y después saben lo, todo el mundo sabe eh, lo que pasó el cansancio me mató pero Estoy listo, esto es una guerra, como, como dice Deontay, y lo que viene es, 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 esta es la tercera guerra mundial. Well, this, uh, la segunda. Uh, this will be the second world war uh, that we're, you're going to experience on Saturday night. I mean, I've had 500 fights since my amateur years, over 10 years fighting, and when you get to the heavyweights, everybody has power. And sometimes it feels like some, you know, like a horse or a mule. 
kicking you. That's how hard these guys hit. So uh, Wilder definitely has uh, a lot of strength. And, um, you know, I'm just going to go out there and try to show and display what, what I know, what I can do. I saw a little respect to another man who knows a thing or two about heavyweights, Lennox Lewis, in the house. Deontay, before I wrap this up, I have one final question. You said on a conference call earlier, uh, I think it was actually early last week, one night, one fight, one blow. That can end it all. How does it end on Saturday night? I mean, look who you're talking to. I'm well aware. <laughs> Is it early? Is it late? Just don't blink. You know, with me, when I step in the ring, me too. I'm, my, <laughs> he says, "Me too." <laughs> my mission, my, my my I only have one goal, one mission. When I step in the ring, it's to knock my opponent out. That's the only way I know. I, I don't know no other way. You know, nobody. I mean, me in, in reality, no one wants to come to a fight and see a two round fight. You know, no disrespect to the little guys. I love you. <laughs> you, know, like, uh, you know, but when they're dealing with the heavyweight division, you know, they don't want to sit there and wait. You know, um, they got other plans. You know, that they have planned at the end of the night, and and my job is to go in and, and, and make the side of fighting and leave it with a dramatic knockout. And that's what I've been doing all my career, and that's what I what the, that's what I plan to continue to do to the end of my career. Well, we are looking forward to it as. Deontay Wilder just said, don't blink. It's Saturday night, goes down 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. We will now allow the fighters to come up for some closing comments. We will start with Miguel Flores. Come on. Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, like, like they said, I mean, there's nothing much left to be said. Uh, we're ready. Uh, like I said, Leo's a great fighter. I respect all his family, his brothers. Um, but Saturday night, you know, once we step in that ring, you know, I'm trying to knock them out. I'm trying to be like Wilder over here. But, uh, of course, buy it. Don't miss it. I mean, you got, I hear the, the comments he says and his motivation, and then I look over at his face, and he got that, like, okay, you're going to see. So it's going to be an action-packed fight, but definitely uh, Leo and myself, we're going to steal the show Saturday night, and you're going to see a great uh, action-packed fight for sure. Thank you, guys. All right, we'll bring up your opponent. Santa Cruz. Yeah, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. And I want to thank my manager, Al Heyman, for putting me in this big place again and you know, giving me the opportunity. And to all the fans, to all the media, I'm really happy. I'm excited to come out here and perform another great show. Uh, like Miguel said, uh, we're both going to go out there, give a great show for you fans. And we're going to try to steal the show. Uh, it, I know it's going to be very hard because, like I said, Ortiz and Wilder, they're both really, you know, explosive fighters. They could knock you out in a blink of an eye, and they're going to come to fight and leave everything in the ring. So, but we're still going to try. We're going to try our best to steal the show. And we just hope that the fans watch the fight, enjoy two great fights, and, you know, come support. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Leo. Now to the heavyweights. Luis King Kong Ortiz. Bueno, como como ya he dicho de antes, esto esto no no va a llegar a dos asaltos. No no queda más que decir o oh, él me no queda o yo lo no quedo, pero lo mejor lo mejor que 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 hubiese esa noche era que no existiera campana. Y vamos a darle para adelante el tren sin freno. <laughs> like I said before, um, and Deontay also said it, this is not going to go 12 rounds. Either he knocks me out or I knock him out. And I wish there was no bells between rounds so we could just keep going. This is going to be a war. <laughs> I like it. All right, on that note, come on up. The heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder. Uh, <clears throat> it's just overall, man, you, you know, this is a great card. We got great champions up here, great fighters. What, what more can you ask for? You know, it's nothing more to really be said. You know, uh, now it's time for action. And I'm looking forward to, to giving you guys the best of me. Lewis is looking to give you guys the best of him, you know, along with the rest of the guys that's on the card. And that's all you guys can ask for. You know, we train very hard to, to get prepared and to go to war. This is war. And with our fight, you already know what to expect, you know. The hard part for you guys it should be the waiting part. You know, some of you probably ain't gonna be able to sleep come Friday night, and that's okay. 
because I'm going to probably be right there with you, visualizing, meditating, getting ready to go to war. This is what it's all about. I'm just excited to be here. I can't wait come Saturday night. You guys are in for a treat as always, you know. This fight will not go to distance. So, as I said before, get your popcorn, go get your pizza, go to the bathroom, make sure you get by somebody that's not going to be able to disturb you, you know. Don't drop your cell phone, put it in your pockets, because you don't want to be the one that drop it and look up and say what happened, because it can happen just like that. And as I always say, these guys have to be perfect for 12 rounds. I only have to be perfect for two seconds. And in the blink of an eye, bam, baby, good night. So I can't wait, guys. You in for a treat. This is going to be an amazing card, amazing fight. And I can't wait, baby. Bomb squad! All right, let's send it back up to the desk to our friends. Kate, take it away.